Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Cult Movie Tuesdays, right here on Night Owl Video. Today I'm talking about the 1974 film, The Towering Inferno, which some of you may argue with me is not really a cult film at all, but I have nothing else to review for today's episode, so I picked this one. It's from the 1970s, it's a disaster movie, it's 50, it's 49 years old. I'm calling it a cult movie, so... If you want to leave me a comment below disagreeing with me, that's fine. Um, but that, that's what we're talking about today. So We will be talking about uh, cast, which is totally stacked. We'll talk about production, critical response, my thoughts on this film, this edition, which is really cool, and a whole bunch more. So I hope you'll stick with me till the end. With that said, let's jump right in on this. This is a disaster action drama film from 1974, directed by John Gillerman, who also directed the 1976 remake of King Kong. He also did King Kong Lives, which I'm going to be reviewing soon. John Gillerman, he, you know, he had um, big shoes to fill re redoing King Kong, and I think... If I'm not mistaken, I think people were like, do not remake King Kong. The 1933 version is the quintessential version, and he did it anyway, and it does have mixed reviews. That was, I'm not going to lie, the first movie I ever saw in the movie theater. I went with my stepdad. I was six years old. King Kong, 1976, Jessica Lang, and I love that movie, and I love that movie to this day. And I know people think that movie's so cheesy, but... I have a really soft spot in my heart for it. But all that said, he also directed this movie two years before that. So he kind of cut his teeth on making these big budget, um, you know, blockbuster type movies. And uh, I, I don't think King Kong lived up to its blockbuster hopes, but um, it was kind of, I think, delivered as that. So, um, but anyway, let's, let's, let's really do a deep dive on this movie. The Towering Inferno has a crazy cast, and I'll mention a few, and then I'll mention the rest. So Paul Newman also starred in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, as well as Slapshot. Uh, Steve McQueen, who was in, of course, Bullet, The Great Escape, The Getaway. Faye Dunaway, who was in Bonnie and Clyde, a movie I reviewed last year, Eyes of Laura Mars. And it also stars... Uh, Fred Astaire, who was in a whole bunch of movies that I've never seen, as well as an episode of the 1970s Battlestar Galactica series. Uh, he was in an episode of that, which I actually saw him because I rewatched that series last winter, and um, I think that was near the end of his life. But So that's those are some of the names, okay? I, I don't have time to... Just, just, just listen. Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, William Holden, Faye Dunaway, Fred Astaire, Susan Blakely, Richard Chamberlain, Jennifer Jones, O.J. Simpson, Robert Vaughn, Robert Wagner. Okay? So this movie is stacked to the... You could say stacked to the roof. <laughs> oh. Anyway, this got a crazy cast. I only just picked a few and gave you some of their other movies. but uh, Because if I mentioned everybody and all the stuff they've been in, I would I'd be here all night. So... The synopsis for this film is this classic 1970s disaster movie about a fire that breaks out in a state-of-the-art San Francisco high-rise building during the opening ceremonies attended by a host of A-list guests. An overworked fire chief and the building's architect must cooperate in the struggle to save lives and subdue panic while a corrupt, cost-cutting contractor tries to evade responsibility for the disaster. So, that's the synopsis for this movie. This is a big old building on fire, kids. And that, that that's what the movie's about, among other things. But we'll get to that. The budget for this film was $14 million, and the box office was a whopping $203 million, making it the highest-grossing film of 1974. So this was the big, big league right here. And John Gillerman was a pretty fresh director, to my knowledge, at this point. So this was these were big, big responsibilities for him to direct this and probably based on the success of this they gave him King Kong because that would have been another movie where they want to, would have wanted somebody that had like a lot of you know experience or like a, a proven track record so in April 1973 it was announced that Warner Brothers whose then production chief was a person named John Calley 
paid $350,000 for the rights <clears throat> to a book called The Tower, written by Richard Martin Stern, prior to the book's publication. Now, this gets really crazy, okay? And we're talking now, $350,000 in today's dollars does not sound like a lot, but trust me, in 1974, that would have been major, major investment money there. The, this amount was larger than originally reported. The book had been the subject of a bidding war between Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox, and Columbia Pictures. Columbia Pictures dropped out when the price reached $200,000, and Warner Brothers offered $390,000. A person named Erwin Allen, who produced this film, who had just had a big success directing the disaster movie The Poseidon Adventure in 1972, was at Fox Pictures and persuaded that studio to make a higher offer when the book was sold to Warner Brothers. Erwin Allen, who, uh, yeah, so he just had like a huge success with this uh, Poseidon Adventure, which is a movie I actually just recently picked up and am eager to check out uh, after I've seen this one now. Um, but yeah, so he was there, luckily. Eight weeks later, Fox was submitted another, a different novel uh, written by Thomas N. Scorcia and Frank M. Robinson called The Glass Inferno, uh, which was published the, the previous year, or sorry, the following year which Alan said had, quote, the same sort of characters, the same locale, the same story, and the same conclusion, unquote. They bought the novel for a reported fee of $400,000. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Erwin Allen was concerned that the two films about a tall building on fire might cannibalize each other. He convinced executives at both studios to join forces to make a single film on the subject. This, this was this is pretty I don't know how many times this has happened in film making history but I think this is pretty rare the studios issued a joint press release announcing the single film collaboration was decided to, to split costs equally between the studios but the film would be made at Fox where Allen was based Fox would distribute in the US and Canada and Warner Brothers outside those territories Warner Brothers also handled the worldwide television distribution rights in October of 1973. So this is like big, big studios working together to make one movie. You've got this massive cast. To top it all off, John Williams did the score to the film, okay? So now at this stage in John Williams' career, he had definitely, I think, done some other things, but he had not yet done Jaws, Star Wars, Close Encounters, Indiana Jones, E.T., like the list goes on and on. But this was one of his early scores, and it is so good. Like, I love John Williams anyway. I mean, I, I, I grew up watching all those movies, and I had those soundtracks as a kid. And that was the music I listened to when I was a kid. I was a huge nerd, just so you know. But, like, the Star Wars soundtracks, the Indiana Jones soundtracks, Close Encounters. Like, I had all those soundtracks as a kid. I didn't have any rock tapes until I was a little older, but I had all those tapes and I loved them. And then when I was watching this movie and I was listening to the score, I was like, oh, wow. Because I really, I'd never seen this movie and I don't think I'd ever heard the score. So this was really good. Was really, really good. The critical response for this movie is it received generally positive reviews. Uh, the film currently holds a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 37 reviews with an average rating of 6.5 out of 10. That's on Rotten Tomatoes. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave the film three out of four stars and praised it as, quote, the best of the mid-70s wave of disaster films, unquote. It was nominated for eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture, winning three awards, Best Song, Best Cinematography, and Best Editing. So there you go, kids. That is the, that is the Towering Inferno. My thoughts on this movie, when it was first over, I thought, my, my, I'm not going to lie. My first thought was that was almost three hours long and it was, it was a building on fire. That's, 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 is that, that's what we're going with. But then, you know, you start to unpack the movie a bit more. And I watched some of the commentary uh, with the film historian and I was kind of like, uh, could see all of the things... Uh, because when you watch a commentary with the film playing on the screen, 
and they're talking about all these different scenes and what's going on, then you learn all this other stuff. So really, this film has a great complexity to it. I mean, beyond what I was just thinking, obviously. But this has your huge cast. And the, for me, the acting was great. Paul Newman, uh, you know, Steve McQueen, Jennifer Jones is in here. I love Jennifer Jones. This was her last movie, actually, before she passed away. But uh, Faye Dunaway... The, the 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 cast was so good and the acting was so good now the production value like as they did uh win an academy award for cinematography it has great cinematography the blending of the special effects and the actors is pretty seamless really like you would really have to like pick it apart um the the obviously the tower is not real it's it's a miniature and it's special effects but it's done really, really well. I like. I was really enthralled by this thing. This has a run runtime of two hours and forty five minutes, which is way beyond my favorite length of a movie. But I stuck with it to the end, and then when I kind of you know got over my initial like, what is this? it's a movie about a building on fire? Like, but then when I started to unpack it with this commentary and thinking about it, I realized like. This was actually a really, really good movie and a really great movie from a young director at the time. Um, but I think the actors, the cast, really, if if this had been like 15, like nobodies, like no name actors, this would have probably not had the weight it did. But this this thing is like a monster. So again, the soundtrack was really good. I love the soundtrack. Uh, the special effects were great. The acting's great. Um, some of the scenes are really unsettling. Like, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I don't think I'm giving away too much by saying some of people die in this movie. Uh, and some of those scenes involve, like, people in relationships, and it's very sad. Um, it's very harrowing at, in scenes. There's a part where they uh, go off a, a rope from one building to the next building over. It's really intense. Um you know, and so I could clearly see by watching this what the uh, studio execs thought after they saw this thought, oh yeah, this Gillerman kid could, or not kid, but young man could definitely take on a remake of King Kong because this movie has all of that stuff in it. The action, the peril, the tension, the dis disaster, all of that stuff. So not a, not a hard thing to imagine those executives thinking that he could carry the King Kong. Which I thought he did. I mean, I, again, I know the movie doesn't get great reviews, but um, yeah, those are my thoughts on this film. Uh, this edition is really cool. Now, I just picked this up a couple weeks ago or maybe like a month ago. Um, this was in a recent thrifting haul video. I think, I, yeah, I had a comment from somebody on this um, that said it was really good or a couple comments on this. Um, this edition I got for, I think, $3. Uh, but And I didn't realize what I was... I mean, I... It has some weight to it, so I thought it must be, it says special edition on the back, so I thought, oh, it's, it must have something inside. So I'll show you the inside, because this is really cool. I So when I bought this, I didn't look inside. I just put it in my stack of movies to watch, and it's been sitting there for weeks. And then I finally got around to watching it, and, um, you know. So it, it turned out, yeah, it is a two-disc set. It is a two-disc set. The Towering Inferno, it says special edition down there. And then on the inside, it has, well, let's see, it has an ad actually for the Poseidon Adventure, which is one I'm going to be watching and reviewing soon. Um, I love these old ads that came in DVDs. I, they don't do this stuff anymore, but it was always cool to get these things. There's a special edition of The Abyss, which is another one of my favorites. Um... Then it has uh, a booklet, The Towering Inferno. It has a cool little drawing on the back. I don't think you can see that. It's a little building on fire cartoon kind of thing. And then this booklet, which has weird glue on the inside for some reason, uh, to keep it together. There's the, there's the tower on fire. Check out that 70s architecture and interior design. Uh, I am a sucker for that stuff. Like when I was a kid, I saw a documentary about um, skyscrapers and even as a little kid I was like obsessed with skyscrapers 
and um, like the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Tower. And uh, so I was already kind of excited going into this movie because I felt like I'm probably going to really like this movie. Um, there's also a little thing in here that says, bring back the good old days. Yeah, please do. Uh, which is an advertisement for old uh, 70s TV shows on 60s and 70s TV shows on DVD. You got some Planet of the Apes, some Hill Street Blues, Lost in Space, MASH, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. So I loved all that stuff. But the coolest thing, which I didn't realize that was inside this, is uh, 20th Century Fox Cinema Classics Collection, which apparently this edition is from. And these are lobby cards. Now, some of you probably know what lobby cards are, and some of you probably don't. Um, these, I don't remember, I never got any of these when I was a kid. And I did grow up in the 70s. But these are basically like, um, they would give these out at big, big theatrical releases, these lobby cards. And they were stills from the movie. And they're about the size of a postcard. So you get these really beautiful images um, from the movie. And I say beautiful in the sense that they're um, beautifully shot uh, or captured. Uh, this was a particular... This is the scene where they're going across from one building to the other in this little, this little cage thing. And oh my god, that part was so scary. Uh, here's Paul Newman looking... Looking pretty intense there, talking on the phone. Uh, here's oh, here's uh, Fred Astaire and Jen my my love Jennifer Jones. Uh, look at they're they're looking at something, something blowing up or something. Uh, we've got some uh, Faye Dunaway and Paul Newman in this one. So imagine going to the theater and like these are just like handed out like that like that was just like a regular thing. Here's Steve McQueen wearing his uh, fire hat. Talking on the phone. There's some folks battling a fire. So yeah, I was going to say earlier, if you don't like fire or disaster or heights, uh, here's a man on fire. A little unsettling. But yeah, so this this edition came with all these post um, lobby cards, I should say. Which I thought was a really classy thing. Um, you just don't get this stuff with DVDs anymore. I mean, this, this case is like solid. Um... You know, now DVDs are put in these, like, eco-friendly cases that half of them crack in half and fall apart. This was made in the good old days. Uh, I think this was 2006, if I'm not mistaken, from 20th Century Fox uh, DVD. Um, you know, they put some care and they put some effort into their releases. And this is definitely um, no exception. So this has all of that cool stuff inside. The special features on here... Um, so disc one has the movie, obviously, along with commentary from film historian F.X. Feeney, as well as all new scene-specific commentary with uh, visual effects people, stunt coordinators. Then on disc two, it has nine all-new featurettes, over 30 deleted scenes, uh, AMC backstory, storyboard to film comparison, uh, interactive articles, uh, original making of featurettes, 1977 Irwin Allen interview, photo galleries, publicity, behind the scenes, conceptual sketches, costumes, original teaser, and trailer. So this thing is stacked. And I know like, you know, a lot of people are really into those boutique labels and they do all that fancy stuff. But this was back in the day when like the regular studios did that stuff too. They don't do that much anymore. But um, these were the, this was like the good old days when they actually put care into this physical media stuff. So um, I don't, yeah, so you can currently rent this movie on YouTube and Apple TV. Both are really expensive. I think they're like, to rent them, they're like $25 or something. Not sure why, um, because most of these older movies you can get for like $5, but yeah, if you want to rent this on YouTube or Apple, it's like $24.99 or something. I don't really understand, but, um, this, I think I've seen this DVD around before, or I've seen other editions of The Towering Inferno uh, in thrift stores, so it's not a super hard one to come across, but you may have to have a bit of patience. Um, but I would highly recommend this if you like 70s movies, disaster movies, uh, cultish kind of movies, all-star cast movies, building on fire movies, big budget 70s blockbuster movie. Like this is this is your this will be your jam. But if you don't like that kind of like 
heights if you're scared of heights or or like being trapped in small spaces with fire then this will not be for you so be forewarned anyway that's my thoughts on the towering inferno thank you for watching let me know your thoughts in the comments below did you like the towering inferno did you not like the towering inferno did you think it's overrated do you think it's hollywood trash do you think it's an epic i feel like this is kind of the last of the big big 70s epic you know all-star cast movies but uh, let me know your thoughts in the in the comments below if you've seen this if you liked it or did not like it if you did not like it why if you liked it why i'm, I'm always curious to hear from people um and yeah that's it for today thank you for watching um and yeah leave comments below what you thought of this film until next time i will see you at the video store or at the thrift store but hopefully i will not see you on the 708th floor of a tower that's on fire hopefully but anyway until next time take good care of yourselves tell your loved ones that you love them thank you to everybody who's supporting my channel as of recording of this video i'm at 311 subscribers on my way to 400 and maybe who know, maybe 500 maybe by the end of the year that'll be my goal 500 but anyway thank you to everybody who subscribed recently left really amazing comments giving me the thumbs up uh, I've been having some great chats with people on the uh, the uh, comments about movies and things like that and getting some great recommendations. Um, I did say I would do something special for my 300th subscriber count. So I'm thinking maybe um, in October, there is an October 13th, uh, Friday the 13th. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do something special for that day, like horror related or something for Fright Friday. Maybe the Friday the 13th movies or something like that. But I'll be thinking about that over the next couple weeks. But until then... Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.